In this lesson, we shall focus on course 1501, Theoretical Computer Science. We shall be looking at past examination questions on this module. And we begin by looking at the first question. And good morning and welcome to the program. Right, we suppose that the universal set U contains the singleton set. So we have that a set that contains only one element is called a singleton, right? So the universal set contains the singleton set uh, with the element one, uh, the element two, and the other other elements in the and and of course the the set that has the uh, elements one and two, uh, and this is a universal set with the following subsets. So the set A has is actually uh, a subset of the universal set U. Um, similarly, B is also a subset. It is as indeed a subset of what we call the universal set U. The set C is similarly, uh, obviously, um, a subset, as described as a subset of, of the universal set U. Answer questions 1.1 to 1.8 using the given sets by circling the alternative number you select. Question 1.1, which one of the following sets represents the union? A, union B. Right, so we understand therefore that in this case, rather A union C, right, so A union C contains a 1 A C. Union uh, to C, which means, therefore, A union C becomes uh, the following, right? It actually, therefore, will contain uh, the each element that is in the set. So it will contain the singleton set, or what we call our singleton. But moreover, it will contain uh, the element uh, A as well. And uh, we also have uh, the element uh, 2 as well. It's going to be actually part of the, because if just uh, we just simply select uh, one element for each. Right, so 2 has been selected. Um, In the same way, we select C as well. So we look for this uh, set. And uh, now this set is actually exactly the same as uh, the set in option three. And obviously one can say the order of the elements. Uh, this order of the, uh, of the elements is arbitrary. And therefore we have two A and C like so. And in, in the end, what we're able to see then is that A union C is the for option three. So the correct answer is option three, option three. Right, make sure that you understand what we've done, uh, but also um, the methods that are involved in solving these particular problems. And this was the solution uh, discussed of a past exam paper we randomly selected. Uh, the series of many past exam papers we shall discuss, of course. We move forward. Right, 1.2, question 1.2, which one of the following sets represents a B intersection A? To do this question, we need to remember the following, that in particular, the set B was given the previous question, and the set B given the previous question contains the element one, it contains one, two, uh, B and C as elements. And therefore, we list those particular elements, right? So we list uh, the the subset uh, um, containing one, um, also one, uh, two there, and uh, the B together with the C. Okay, right. But also, we actually um, recall what the set A was given as. In particular, it was given as the singleton set one or containing one and uh, with A and C as elements of A, and therefore we state uh, one A and C as elements of A. We continue to perform the set um, intersection, and therefore we actually list the elements in order 
one, two, B and C, we find uh, the intersection. And therefore, you have one, uh, A and C. Um, we actually pause to reason and then say what elements are common in both sides. We can see, therefore, that the elements, uh, um, which are singletons, are common in both sides. We shall list uh, the first singleton there. Next, we actually are able to identify that C is also popular. It is a common element, and therefore we have uh, exactly this. Now, the question is which option is the correct one here in this past exam paper? It is very clear that option one is the correct answer because uh, it lists uh, all the elements in B intersection A as required. And we've been, therefore, able to solve this particular problem in a step-by-step -step manner. Then we proceed with our study of further questions. We attempt the next question. Right, question 1.3, which of the following sets represent what you call the set difference? Right, so we compute the set difference. Right, so the set difference has a particular notations, but we shall discuss the set difference um, in detail there. So we get actually looking at the Venn diagram. But first, let us uh, list uh, the set uh, C. Um, we remember from the given information in this particular question paper that the set C contains elements uh, two together with C, two and C, right? Two and C are members or elements of the set C. And uh, we have uh, the set B, uh, right? Uh, the set B contains uh, the elements, uh, right? Uh, one, uh, one, two, B and C. We list those as well, right? So one, one, right? One, two, one and two, B and C are members or certain elements of the set are uh, B. The question, therefore, is which one is the correct answer in this case? So what we're going to do, we're going to compute the set difference. So we then say uh, 2 together with C, right? So 2 together with C, obviously we understand that they represent uh, the elements there, right? So if you have exactly that, we're going to say... Um, we have uh, uh, C minus B. Let's write it down. We write it down. C minus B. We have two together with C. We subtract B, which is one, one, two, B and C. And then we compute the set difference, right? Which is uh, obviously C minus B. And therefore, to do this particular set difference, uh, we proceed as follows. Now, we think about the fact that from the set C, we remove uh, the following elements. But this is also the same as, I want to make a, uh, actually um, uh, a clear uh, explanation here. So if you have C minus B, it is C intersection B complement. So these things are the same. Right. So if these things are the same, therefore, one can be in a position to use this. So now that's what I'm going to use. So we can use uh, C and 2 and C. Intersection, the complement of this set, which is the singleton. 1, 2, C, complement. What is C minus B? Right, what is C minus B? Right. Okay. C minus B, therefore, can be seen now. If we're looking at the complement of this set, we have to remember the universal set. Right, what is the universal set? The universal set contains one. Okay, how do we know? Um, we know the universal contains one, two, one, two, A, B, and C. We list those. So it contains uh, one, two, one, two, A, B, and C. So if we are to take the complement of this set, 
which is the complement of the set B. We're therefore going to have 2C intersection. The complement of this would be, um, we remove uh, uh, from this uh, the, the, the singleton containing 1, 1, 2, and uh, we also remove C. So in other words, we come to this set, we cross uh, 1 out, we cross uh, 1, 2 out, we cross uh, C out, and we're left with uh, the elements 2A and B. We list them. 2A, right? It's one way to do it, of course. 2A and B. And then now we're going to look out for what is common. And 2 is the only common element uh, there. We can see very, very well. So we can see, therefore, that 2 is in the intersection. And therefore, the correct option is option 2 for us. Uh, and it is very clear, therefore, uh, that we are able to understand and interpret uh, this question very, very well. Let us move on to the next, next notion. Right, so now we're going to actually look at the um, sum of the two sets, A and C. So if we take note and remember that the set A itself contains uh, one as a singleton, but also it contains uh, the following. It contains uh, A and C. We'll remember from the given information, uh, C contains uh, two and C. A plus C, right, A plus C, plus 2C. Okay, so when you add these particular sets, you're able to see, therefore, that what you're going to have, you're going to have to look very, very carefully, think extra carefully, and uh, look at the following. So the sum of the two sets, A and C, is defined as follows. So we're going to select uh, the element uh, in the element uh, which is the singleton set. And uh, we shall have uh, as well, um, for example, the element uh, two as well. We've selected the first here. We select uh, also the first there. And uh, we select also the element A, right? And now we, we actually do not select uh, the element C because uh, it is a common element. So we note that uh, C itself here is common. Um, by dint of it being common, right, being a common element in both sets, um, which is uh, uh, obviously uh, found uh, in the intersection of the two sets, uh, right, so it is a common element. And this common element, uh, where do we find it? We find it in the intersection of the two sets. By dint of that, then uh, we don't uh, choose that one. And which means, therefore, we have one. Right, uh, we have uh, also two. And uh, we have uh, exactly A as well. So we have one, two, and A. So one, two, and A gives us exactly the fourth option. And uh, we have been able to um, compute uh, the sum of two sets, um, A and C. And the, the sum of the two sets, A and C, um, is just short of the element in the intersection, the element C there. And now we continue to practice a little bit more. Let us try the next question. 1.5 is the next question. Which of the following sets uh, represents uh, a union C complement? Of course, to do this question, we need to remember what uh, A is in the given information, but it contains uh, the singleton uh, containing one uh, with uh, A and C as well. But uh, we note that uh, C contains uh, two and C as elements. Uh, by dint of this, we are interested in finding uh, a union C, right? The question then is uh, A union C complement. What is this? But first, uh, let us find the union. Perhaps that is the easiest way to do uh, the question. Or we can use what you call the De Morgan's law. Okay, but obviously De Morgan's law is used uh, sometimes, and it is very applicable in this case to solve this problem. Let us find the union of the two sets. 
What does A union say? We list uh, all the elements in the set A. We take the union with the set C. And uh, now we are able to state uh, the union, A union C, uh, in detail, but also with all its uh, interior elements. And uh, now we are able to see that one occurs uh, first. We can choose uh, that one there. And next, we can choose uh, um, A, for example. And uh, we can choose uh, C, but we can also choose uh, two. And therefore, this would be the union because it was, we have picked all the elements uh, in A, but also all the elements uh, in uh, C, which are two and C. Okay, right. We're excited. But we pause and remember what we need to do here. So we need to actually think but to think extra, extra carefully as we reason this out. But what then do we do uh, in this case? We need to remember the universal set, the universal set. So recall, right, recall the universal set. Recall that the universal set U contains uh, the following, right? It contains uh, one, uh, two. It contains uh, one, two. It contains uh, A, B, and C. And then right now, if we then are interested in finding A union C complement, which would therefore mean that uh, from the A union C, you just get rid of the elements. Uh, so now let us come to the uh, to the universal set. So we're gonna cross out uh, the element th there because we're interested in the in the complement. We're gonna cross out two for uh, uh, for instance. We're gonna cross out uh, A as well, right? Um, and C of course. A and C, of course. So we have uh, one, two, three, four, and we crossed out the four elements, uh, A and C, one and two, and therefore this is the uh, A union C complement. It contains uh, only the elemental uh, one, two, together with uh, B as well. And uh, it is very, very clear that the correct option here, as we practice more and more, and as we shall do a wide range of problems, uh, this one contains one, two, and B, and it is clearly option one. Meaning, therefore, that the first option um, is the correct answer. You know that our discussion is recorded for control and quality purposes, and therefore would have a perfect chance to uh, revisit this discussion in due course and make sure that we're able to uh, interpret everything and uh, be able to access information um, pertaining our discussion here even uh, next time. Right, so we continue with 1.6, which one of the following sets is not a partition of you? Right, so we are looking at the question 1.6, right, the question 1.6. So now we need to remember that the U is our universal set, but we're looking for a set that is not a partition of this. So we contain, uh, we look at the fact that U contains one, it contains uh, two, it contains uh, one and two, it contains uh, A, B, and C, like so. And then now we actually, therefore, need to look very, very carefully and uh, realize that uh, in this case, which set would not be a partition, right? So you would realize, therefore, that this set here contains uh, one, two, it contains uh, one as well, one, two, one, it contains uh, BC, which BC does not appear here. So this set here cannot be a partition. The partition of U contains subsets of U. But uh, we actually are rest assured that uh, the subset BC is not there. Right. And so now you actually obviously note that because this BC is not a member of U. And so now it is something that uh, you actually obviously need to think about. Right. And hence uh, now we then say, if you look at this particular set, for instance, in four, it contains uh, the A, um, two, B, C, one, 
in one two containing uh, the subsets of uh, um um of of u and therefore if we look at this uh, very 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 carefully and also you look at the fact that this uh, particular set here does it contain if you look at the union of all these would it contain uh, all the elements right would it contain uh, for instance uh, the element uh, c would it contain uh, the element uh, b would it contain uh, the element uh, a as it is right would it contain uh, uh, the element uh, two as well so um, as a consequence, it is very clear, therefore, that the correct option here would be option three. Right, so option three would therefore not be a partition of you. Why well, have to spend a lot of time discussing the notion of partitions, partitions of sets. So we shall spend a great deal of time discussing the notion of partitions of sets. We look at the next question. Let the set T contain uh, A, C, um, and those particular elements be a relation. Okay, so these are some of the concepts we shall spend a great deal of time discussing. The notion of a relation. So now, if you then say um, we have uh, this set T, uh, and uh, we're saying let this T be a relation on A, which one of the following statements is true regarding T? Right, so we, we need to check, of course, because number uh, one, option one, option two, three, and four, uh, one says T is reflexive, but not transitive. Uh, uh, T is symmetric and satisfies the trichotomy law or trichotomy. Uh, T is irreflexive and transitive. Uh, T is neither reflexive nor irreflexive. Okay. We are actually here and we want to discuss uh, this particular question. Let us uh, actually reason this uh, very, very well. Now, to look at this, um, we are then saying let T be a relation on A. So you have T, but A contains uh, the elements uh, 1. We need to remember from the given information what elements uh, does A contain. It contains uh, the single tone containing one, and uh, it contains uh, A and C as well. And now we're asking the questions, and we're going to answer them ourselves. Is it reflexive? Okay, but obviously because these are properties of a relation. Um, right, is it uh, symmetric? Right, is it symmetric as well? So we check that. Okay, is it uh, irreflexive? We check that. We check that. Right, so now let us see what this is the case. So now, if uh, it is reflexive, every element must uh, be related to itself. Let us check uh, the singleton one one is it related to itself. Right, so this single turn would have to be related to itself. So if this is a relation on A, would uh, have, have, have to check if a uh, one one is there. Clearly, it is not there. This element uh, is not in the in the, in, in T, so it is not there. And this is our conclusion. It is not there in uh, in T. It's not there in T. Now, if you're dealing with a C. Let us look at A and see if uh, we are able to see that uh, if uh, this is there. Right. So, in terms of symmetric, but there is no C A. Okay. This means obviously. I mean, what we're saying here in a nutshell. This means that our relation. Uh, right, so the relation is not is not reflexive. It's not reflexive. Okay, but also the relation is not symmetric. Okay, irreflexive. 
It is not symmetric because, uh, we, of course, uh, we can see a C, but there has to be C A also in T to actually allow us to conclude, therefore, that T itself is symmetric. And therefore, T is not a symmetric operation. Next. We're going to look at uh, a reflexive property. Right. Is C C present? Right. So you're going to be see, seeing that CC is present, right? So we have that CC is present, and so the element CC is indeed present because we can see it in the relation T. And therefore, the correct option will have to be option four. That says that T is neither reflexive, right? The correct option will have to be four to then say, T is neither reflexive because the one, the number one, it says it is reflexive, but surely it is not. The second one says it is symmetric, but surely it is not. The next one uh, claims that it is irreflexive. So now the correct option will have to be that says it is neither reflexive nor e, uh, irreflexive. Right. Obviously, see, as much as CC is present, but uh, we would need uh, more elements, and the, full, the correct option would have to be um, that T is neither reflexive nor irreflexive, right? Because uh, we have seen that it is not indeed reflexive there, but it would not be irreflexive because uh, of the fact that uh, we do not have uh, enough supply of elements uh, there to make it irreflexive, despite uh, the fact that C and C are, are present there. But obviously, we have to spend a, a great deal of time discussing these particular notions and solving a wide range of problems. Let us look at the next question. Question 1.8. What is the cardinality of the third? Um, a plus C intersection B complement. Now, this set here, obviously look at the cardinality. The cardinality refers to the number of elements in the set. Number of elements in the set. Number of elements in the set. Right, number of elements in the set is called the cardinality. So when you have A plus C, Right, let us check this out. So, but now to discuss the cardinality here, we need to remember what A is, what uh, or we need to recall what uh, A, B, and C were given us in the, in, 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 the, in the introduction of this question. So now we remember that they said A contains uh, this single term containing one, it contains uh, A, but also it contains uh, C. Right, and you have uh, this one uh, contains a uh, two, it contains C as well. We have the uh, B, which contains a uh, one, but also it contains uh, uh, the following. Uh, it contains a uh, one and two, but also it contains a uh, B and C, like so. The question then is, what then do we do with this? What then do we do with this? So what we then do here is to determine the following. Is to determine the following. Right. Is to determine the set. Because for us to find the cardinality of the set, we must be able to write out the set. But first, uh, we remember we got uh, A plus C. Right. So if we remember very, very well, we computed A plus C because A plus C was 1AC, right, plus C, which is 2C, and therefore we actually only removed C, which is the common element, and we were able to remember that this one was 1, right, it was also 2, and it was also A like so. Okay. Right. Now, with our analysis of this, we continue to look at things more. Right. So now we look at the intersection with the complement of B. What would the complement of B? Well, obviously, we need to remember something interesting about uh, the universal set. What is the universal set? 
The vessel set uh, contains uh, one, it contains uh, two, it contains uh, one and two, but also it contains uh, A, B, and C, like so. Now, if we want uh, the A union, the uh, your, we want uh, the uh, B complement. So let us find the B complement to be able to just find the intersection of this. And so what is B complement? So we go straight to the um, to the U, right? And uh, looking at the U, we actually cross out the um, the elements that are there. So we want to find B complement, so um, one is common, so we remove it. And then uh, also we have the what? We have the C, we remove it. We have the B, we remove it because it's there. We removed one, we removed B, we removed C, we removed one, two. And then we have two A. Okay, now let us ponder on this and reason this out. So that is the set. So if we have A plus C, right, if we have A plus C, but we're taking the union of this, right, and then we have uh, B complement. What is A plus C? It contains uh, one, two, and A. Intersection, the complement, which is two and A. So we have uh, the following. So now let us reason this out uh, together and uh, see exactly what we need to do here with this one. So the question then is what is the uh, intersection? Right, you can see two and A are both there. So we have uh, two together with A. And therefore we have two elements in this particular set. And uh, now uh, reason, uh, uh, reasoning this uh, very carefully because uh, we have been able to list all the elements uh, in this set. It is uh, very clear that the cardinality. So now we find the cardinality. So to find the cardinality, we write like like as follows. So this is the cardinality, which is uh, two and A, and the cardinality therefore is two. 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 Because the elements are two and therefore the correct option is, uh, is option one. The correct option is uh, option one. Okay, right. We continue with more practice and we try the next question. Right, question 2.2 is very interesting, but it focuses on a survey. A survey involving 30 students is done to determine which study aids students prefer. Sometimes the students need to uh, be aware of certain study aids for efficient academic uh, execution of, of work, but also for adequate comprehension of what is being studied. And so what then happens is a survey is conducted to actually come to a conclusion and at least know what study aids are popular among students uh, there. So now the following is found, okay? 13 students prefer textbooks, right? So we have 13 students prefer textbooks. Right, and so if this is the case, right, and we agree that 13 students prefer textbooks, uh, 20 students prefer, so they also prefer textbooks, but there are 13 of those, 20 students prefer study guides, and then 17 students prefer online lessons. So it doesn't necessarily mean that the students prefer one aid only. So we note that doesn't mean they are in one aid only. But again, because this survey was involving 30 students, it means therefore the universal set contains 30 elements. Furthermore, eight students prefer textbooks and online lessons. OK, so we have those that are eight. Seven students prefer study guides and online lessons. Ten students prefer textbooks and study guides. Okay, uh, this is what we've been given. Complete, this is what you need to do. Right, complete the Venn diagram. 
complete the Venn diagram below with the given information and then answer the rest of the questions that follow. Okay, let us ponder on this particular question and reason these together. And we find uh, the following uh, uh, answers here in a step-by-step -step, uh, fashion. Uh, and we have, we have, we have, Right, so in look at 2.2, we have uh, the following. Let us reason this out uh, together and uh, make sure we understand this very well, very well. So now, if you look at this particular question, we need to complete the Venn diagram. So let us put X in the middle. So for those students uh, that prefer textbooks, study guides, online lessons, we put X for those. And then we reason that, right, if we then say 10 students prefer textbooks and study guides. Textbooks and study guides, it's 10. So here we're going to put 10 minus x. Because of the 10, 10 minus x. So that 10 minus x plus x will give us exactly 10. Next, as we do the Venn diagram, we continue with our, with our search. But now there are, um, for instance, seven students prefer study guides and online lessons, right? Study guides and online lessons are seven. So here we would have seven minus uh, X also. And uh, we have uh, eight students prefer textbooks and online lessons, textbooks and online lessons. So those students are eight. So you have eight uh, minus uh, X, exactly that way. And therefore, now in the end, we actually obviously come to the conclusion that the textbook students, right, the textbook students are how many? So you note that there are 13 students who prefer textbooks, right? So in other words, if you look at the fact that there are 13 students who prefer textbooks, so you then say the textbooks, right? The textbooks would be 13 minus x, minus 10 minus x, but also, um, right, so that is what we have, right, and if this is the case, um, we then have uh, the following, and then we'd have to subtract also from the 13, um, right, we said 13, we subtract x, subtract 10 minus x, but we also subtract uh, uh, 8 uh, minus x, and therefore, at this point, uh, what answer do we get? So we get, therefore, that this is 13 minus x minus 10 plus x minus 8 plus x. So that t becomes the same as. What is this? We have 13 minus 10, which is exactly a 3, right? A 3 minus 8 is a minus 5. And then uh, we have x minus x plus x, which is 0. And this gives us exactly uh, x uh, like so. So now, if uh, we have uh, exactly this, so we have uh, uh, x minus 5, right? So we take note of this, x minus 5. But we're not done yet. Um, we know we know very well that there are those students who prefer the, the study guides, okay? They, want, they love study guides a lot. And uh, now, those who love study guides, we're going to take uh, note of those. Let, let us deal with those and uh, compute those quickly. Right, so the study guides would be, for example, so um, there are how many? 20 study guides. So which means that we have 20 minus... Right, so for the study guides, you have 20, then you have the study guides there. So you have minus x uh, with minus 7 plus x uh, with minus 10 plus x for the study guides. And therefore, what is the answer out of this? This is 20. Now, minus 7 minus 10 is minus 17. So 20 minus 17 is exactly a 3. Okay. So now we have minus x plus x, which gives us exactly x there. Okay. So this would be, the study guides would be 3 plus x. Okay. Let us continue with our analysis of the very interesting uh, uh, Venn diagram question. And uh, now we look at the following. <clears throat> Let us look at the online classes. 
there's some students who love online classes uh, relative to the study guides and everything else. Okay, <clears throat> but how many of those are there? Obviously, <clears throat> it is clear that those students are 17. So you're going to have uh, 17 minus, right? We minus x. We minus this. So we minus uh, 8, uh, and then it's going to be plus 10. Uh, plus x, excuse, we minus 7 uh, plus x, and therefore it's going to be 17 minus 8 minus 7. So minus 8 minus 7 is going to be minus 15. Uh, 17 minus 15 becomes a 2, and we have uh, minus x plus x is 0, which is exactly uh, 2 plus x. Okay. So now this is exactly what we have. So now if we think about this very, very well, we have got this particular result here. So we're going to add every single bit of thing we have got. If then from T, right, which is 13, we subtract everything here, we have uh, minus five plus x for the um for the s. We have uh, actually three plus uh, x when you remove all these things, and uh, obviously this one uh for the online classes we also have uh, two plus x. Okay, so with this now we need to add every single bit of thing. Right, so to add everything, because you need to complete the Venn diagram below the given information and then answer the questions, the rest of the questions. Right, so if uh, we have uh, exactly done that, we actually have for, uh, uh, to complete uh, the Venn diagram, but also we need to find uh, our X in the Venn diagram, what is X in this particular question, and we proceed to find X as follows. Let us uh, find the numerical value of X. So if we add every single bit of thing, we shall get what is in the universal set. And therefore, it means that if we look very carefully here, what we have is the for the 30. Uh, 30, which is the uh, number of the elements in the universe, is going to be exactly what? We start from the center uh, um, of, of intersections. Uh, we begin with x, but also we're going to add uh, the following, uh, 8 minus x. And then uh, we add also uh, the following, uh, 7 minus x. And then we add the following, uh, 10 minus x. And then uh, we have the following, uh, plus or minus 5 plus x. Right. 3 plus x. Plus 2 plus x. Okay. And so what is all this here? So what we're getting, we're getting 30 equals. Right, if we have x minus x is 0, Minus x, minus x is minus 2x, plus x is minus x, plus x is 0, leaving us with only x. We have 8 plus 7, which gives us a 15, uh, a 25 with the 10, minus 5, it's 20. And then uh, with the uh, 3 and the 2 is actually exactly a 25. And then we're getting x is equal to? 30 minus 25 is a 5. It's a 5. Okay, so now we're able to therefore see that x equals 5. x equals 5. So you can come here to the Venn diagram and uh, actually obviously include the accurate numbers. For instance, uh, we can see that x is equal to 5. And uh, here we put uh, 5 here. And if you put uh, 5 there, you would have, for instance, a 0. Here you'd have a 5, there you'd have 5 minus that, which is actually exactly what? A 3, and then uh, here you have a 3 plus 5, which is going to give us uh, 8, and then a 5 minus uh, 7 minus 5, it's a 2, and then uh, we have a 2 plus 5, uh, which is a 7, and therefore these are actually the actual accurate elements of this particular Venn diagram. And then we will answer the questions uh, that follow. Like uh, the next question is very, very easy and straightforward. 
And here comes the question. How many students prefer to have textbooks, study guides, and online classes? Two marks. Right, so obviously we're able to look and see. Um, right, those are five of the students. So now those students are exactly five in number. Right, so now uh, we are able to therefore see that five uh, prefer all three. Right, so five uh, students. Right, five uh, students prefer. Prefer all three. Five students prefer all three because uh, we have seen that uh, five students are actually in the intersection of uh, all the uh, study um, aids. Okay, so we continue. How many students prefer to have textbooks only? One more. Textbooks only. Right, we have seen therefore, if you look at this particular question here, right, so... This one is uh, the textbooks only. We've seen that textbooks only are minus five plus x. So, I mean, you're allowed to put this kind of detail and say it's minus five plus x, minus five plus five, and therefore the sum is zero. And therefore the sum is zero. And therefore the sum is zero. Next question. Next question. How many students would like? Right, so um, you have exactly that. You have exactly that, your two, three, four. How many students would like to have study guides and online lessons, but no textbooks? There are those students who are gonna like to have like study guides, online lessons, but no textbooks at all. The students are like, we don't love textbooks. We don't want them. What do we want? Study guides and online lessons. Let's check. So let's look at the Venn diagram. So obviously at this point, uh, we analyze in this case uh, that uh, we would actually be looking at uh, the study guides and online lessons, but no textbooks. Here are the study guides uh, and online lessons, but no textbooks at all. And that would mean uh, you have uh, exactly 7 minus x. So, study guides. Study guides and online lessons. Would be 7 minus x. X is five, and the result obviously becomes exactly two. Right. So which means that, and then we can say, hence two students. Two students would like, would like uh, to have Study guides, right? Study guides and online lessons. Study guides and online lessons, but uh, no textbooks. But uh, no textbooks, yeah? But uh, no textbooks. But uh, no textbooks. Right, but no textbooks, yeah? but no textbooks. So yeah, it's something you need to note there. Let's look at the next question. But also would realize that in this particular case here, it is something we have done already. The two already, we could just take the two. We have just taken the two and said two students prefer study guides and online lessons, but no textbooks at all. Next question. Okay, let us look at the following a set theoretical proof. Proof without using Venn diagrams that uh, A intersection uh, uh, B complement union C is A minus uh, B union A intersection uh, C for all subsets uh, A B, and C of a vessel set U show all the stabs. Show all the stabs. Right.
show all the steps. Let us start. So to start this, you then say X is an element of this. You start with X that is an element of that, and then we show that X is an element of this, if and only if this is the case. So X that is an element of this would mean X is an element of A, and X is an element of B complement union C. This means X is an element of A, and X is an element of uh, B complement. Right, X is an element of B complement. Or X is an element of uh, C. Like so. And this would mean X is an element of A. X is not in B. Right, X is not in B, and the uh, and you have and you have X in C, X in A. And right, so at this point, if this is the case, this can be seen to mean X is an element of B or X is an element of A. Okay, we're going to discuss this one, Timokan's law, and X is uh, an element of C. Right, let us put or here. Let us maintain our <clears throat> our or by De Morgan's law. Uh, you you can write like this. By De Morgan's law, then means X is in A, and that all oh, this is the case. So there's something called De Morgan. Right, De Morgan. De Morgan's law. Which means that uh, whenever you actually, um, or what you call the set distribution, that is uh, what uh, I want to actually describe here, the set distribution property. So when you have A uh, intersection B or C, it is A and uh, B union A and uh, C. Okay. So now, what is this? Right, so you have the, the following. So here, take, take X not in B, still. Right, take X not in B, and therefore this would mean that X is an element of A without B. A without B, because A X is not in B. Or... This would mean X an element of A intersection C. A minus B. You have this. Hands. Okay, in the end, then obviously you would have proven this particular property. And so uh, this is very clear that uh, we have proven this particular property. In other words, we have shown that uh, whenever X is an element of uh, uh, A intersection uh, in, in brackets or in parentheses, uh, B primed uh, union uh, C, B complement union C, it is uh, exactly an element of the A minus B union A intersection C and vice versa because of the if and only if. The if and only if is also called a biconditional. It's also called a biconditional and a biconditional obviously is uh, an implication in both uh, directions, in both uh, the left and uh, the right directions. 
So it is something that uh, you need to take note of and uh, it is something that uh, you need to understand uh, very, very well. So it's very important, therefore, that uh, you understand uh, these uh, particular set uh, theoretic operations. These are set theoretic. Set uh, theoretic operations. These are set uh, theoretic operations. And so, yeah, that is what we have. That is exactly what we have. Now, I'm watching the time. It's just uh, actually a minute before seven. But uh, now, take note of these things. There are tons of questions we shall be doing. Um, but also, the overall, by the entire syllabus for this module, we shall be solving uh, a wide range of problems. It is so important that you get yourself uh, actually um, attuned to this so that uh, we can be in, in a position to make the most uh, of our progress and be in a position to, to succeed. This is a very, very easy module where we can be rest assured that a distinction can be achieved uh, with great ease and simplicity. Right, just watching the time is just exactly 7 a.m. And obviously our plan has been to run from 6 to 7, right? So um, I know there are tons of questions we shall plan to we shall do. Uh, right, but obviously we are uh, concluding our discussion right now, and uh, we shall, okay, this le lesson is recorded for control and quality purposes. We shall send you the recording the next couple of minutes. So you will take, yes, right, we shall send the recording the next couple of minutes, and uh, we keep in touch, then we'll talk more, and we'll follow the, the rest of the program uh, diligently um, moving forward, okay? Thank you. Thank you, dear. All the best. We'll talk then. All the best and God okay. bless. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Goodbye. Thank you.